who's to blame for this um, spate of killings? Mm. Uh, Benue State also has a peculiar position, especially with its um, issues with the federal government. And even on this issue, President Buhari has spoken, uh, but uh, Governor Tom has also spoken. There, there's been this running battle now as to the level of involvement of the federal government being little or how sufficient. Mm. What, Questioning, what really querying think? the sincerity of government to addressing their matters. Well, uh, the government was voted into power to protect the state. You know, sometimes we are, we, the problem we have in our own country here is uh, centralizing our problem. Uh, centralizing our problem in the sense that when incident transfer, for example, in uh, Lagos State or in my own state, Edo State, uh, you want to blame the president or you want to blame the presidency. Uh, the reason why you are voted into power as a governor is to carry out a vulnerability assessment within your given state if you are suffering from such kind of incident. You know, most times people don't understand the power of vulnerability assessment or vulnerability analysis. It begins with asking questions. Mm. What is the problem, Vera? The problem is uh, insurgency, terrorism, and banditry. What is the solution? Military might. The next question is, uh, the military might you applied, did it really solve the problem? No. Then go to the next question. What should be done? Now, we've applied military might, it's not working. We've applied police might, it's not working. What should the government of uh, Benue State be doing? Because we need to stop the blame game. We're talking about human lives here, uh, being eliminated by criminal elements. Let's stop the blame game. Let's start looking at pro profiling solutions. Profiling solutions is very, very, uh, is, is doable because sometimes I think maybe Nigeria is sitting on a one billion landmass. No, we're sitting on 920,000, 23,000 square kilometers. If you're looking at the ethnography of Nigeria, um, and, uh, you know, we have a lot of tribes, ethnic groups, 371 uh, mm -hmm. uh, tribes, uh, 520 languages, 250 ethnic groups. Uh, we have a multidimensional uh, uh, issue here and needs to be, uh, uh, we need to apply the you know, proactive measures. So for me, I think uh, the state governor should stop blaming the government and the government should stop blaming the state government. We need to start seeing solutions. You were voted into power because if you look at the election campaign, you see security in the agenda. So if you have security in your agenda that you are going to protect the state, why blaming the government? Oh yes, you want to say Dixon. The military does not re reply, uh, respond to, 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 to the governors. Of course. And they respond strictly to the, uh, 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 what's the, the federal government. government. That tells you that we failed in building the capability of our policing system uh, because, uh, you know, presently we are practicing a centralized policing system. Yes, so we need to decentralize that. Thank God we're having a new administration come May 29. Uh, uh, the, the, the security agenda for the incoming president must be robust to tackle the incident we are facing. If we don't tackle it from the foundational route, looking at the causative factors, how did Benway State arrive at this uh, uh, state of killings? Mm. What led to the killings? Is there a rift between Benway? Uh, between the people and the full and enhancement mm -hmm. or the uh, bandits, whatever the case may be. What is the solution being proffered? Because President, as it is, the state governor uh, said uh, he suspended the vigilante group to allow, uh, what was it called, uh, the enhancement to leave the state. And I asked myself a question, why are you suspending these guys to allow the headsmen to leave the state. What if during the period of suspension, or during the period you suspend these guys uh, from working, suspended these guys from working, these uh, headsmen carry out more attacks and kill more people? Mm -hmm. We shouldn't be looking at that. Go after this criminal element, no matter who is involved. Even if it's a, the president's brother, or whatever the case may be. We're talking about human lives here, because human lives are irreplaceable. Mm -hmm. If we don't play, place premium or place value on human lives, I tell you the truth, we'll continue to have negative uh, limelight, uh, negative image in the international community. Mm -hmm. And uh, if we talk about image, we're talking about rep, uh, uh, tangible and intangible image here. Yeah. So people will think Nigeria is not a uh, rest, restful place or a peaceful place for you to carry out business. It's affecting us globally. So the state governor must go back to the drawing board, call for a security uh, meeting. The military and the police should leave this, uh, this uh, egoism of a team because everybody wants to take glory. No uh, you think that's what the synergy. issue is? Most times, I think that is the issue. Uh, if, if I want to ask the Benway State Governor, where is your command control center in Benway State? If you have a command control center, you need to have the military there, you need to have the police, you need to have other sister agencies in the com command control center. Mm -hmm. Then when an incident transpired, if, for example, someone is raising an alarm that something is taking place, or there's a crime in progress, uh, let me say in Otoko, 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 for example, mm -hmm. then it goes to the command control center. They decentralize the information. Then we're talking about uh, uh, surveillance here. These guys move within a, a territory. They, they're not, they don't fly. Like, they are not winches, they are human beings. Mm -hmm. They move around. So if I want, I, I will ask, where is the heli where are all the helicopters? Because most times we are not even using helicopters. I, I was watching a film just two days ago where somebody uh, committed a crime and they were chasing it with a helicopter. Mm -hmm. Where do you want to run to? 
So the helicopter, if they need to deploy helicopter just uh, for surveillance purpose, it's going to help the state government. But for here, I don't think people are ready to even buy, uh, purchase uh, uh, surveillance equipment to mitigate the spread of uh, uh, crime in their state. It's disturbing. But what do you think this um, criminals, what is their target, really? As in, and as in demystifying the problem, you know, perhaps we want to also wear the cap of these this guys to know what they're after, what they want. Centralization, uh, certification of crime. Uh, the, our government in the past few years have certified crime, which is very painful. Certified crime in the sense that uh, I will see government sending officials to go and discuss with bandits, to go and negotiate with bandits. Negotiating with the enemy is a sign of weakness. We have not gotten to that stage. Nigeria is a, it's a, it's a sovereign state. We have the military. We have the police. We have all our security agents in place. Because, so we, each time, for example, I'm sorry, because uh, they even went as far as going on to an IDP camp. And, and, that, and that, one that, would that, have wondered, these people even left their, they left their ancestral homes now to seek refuge at the camp. Because of them. And they're not saying they can't. And now they come. They target them. What do they want? What are they after? Kemi, that is a good question. You see, uh, the resumption of this uh, banditry is disturbing. During the uh, presidential and the governorship campaign, I, I was thinking maybe they finally repented or maybe uh, they've taken a departure from their evil ways. I never knew they went on holiday or maybe they went to also cast, cast their vote. This, I'm talking about the criminal elements here. But all of a sudden, after election, we begin to hear bad news. Now, I was, earlier, earlier when I was talking about certification of crime, I call it certification of crime because if we don't punish people for what they do, mm. You are certifying crime. You are telling the world that Nigeria is a place you come and commit crime. After committing that crime, you go and tell the government, oh, we have repented, just like uh, I'm seeing some repentant uh, program going on. I'm not against DDR. If you want to carry out an effective DDR, you need to check the consequence of that DDR. For example, somebody come and kill, my, kill, kill someone's father, kill his mother, and at the end of the day, say he's repented. Then negotiating with these terrorists. He said, no, no, we don't do that. Don't, let it not be a game plan. It shouldn't be a game plan because some years ago, I, I even see the governor of Castina State taking pictures with some terrorists or they send people to go and negotiate with them. I say, hey, don't play with the devil because you are playing with fire. Because each time you negotiate with this guy, I tell you, you are playing with fire because they know what they want. What do they want? One, they've seen the vulnerability of our security agents, and two, they believe that Nigeria is a space whereby they can stop the federal government and get what they want. Now, in terrorism management, people think those that are killed are the victims. No, the first victim are the government. It's the government. If governments see themselves as first victim, they will understand the reason. Uh, they will know that they are supposed to put in appropriate measure to mitigate the high speed of insecurity. Those victims that were killed by, or the people that were killed by these guys, they never offended these terrorists. They never offended these bandits. But they want to put shame on the government. They want to shame the government globally to suppress the government and ensure that they push uh, 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 what they want to the government. So now, if we want to get this, like the IDP camp, you rightly said, they ran away from these terrorist guys and they said they went to IDP camp. Now, how did they get entrance into the IDP camp? Is this an open space? Mm -hmm. If you put these guys in an open space, you are doing a school. bad job. Mm -hmm. It is an intentional error for to fetch people from a disaster-prone uh, disaster -prone environment, take them to an IDK, IDP camp that's not protected. What is the perimeter fencing of that IDP camp? Now, how did they get access? Is that's the issue because this matter, this matter of the IDP camps yeah. uh, particularly, uh, the government had promised 10 billion naira to, I think, we relocate them to settle them okay. in the states. Okay. And they have been asking, the community have been asking government, where is this money? When where is, is it, this when money? When is the money coming? When is the money coming? <laughs> that goes back to the question of the sincerity of government oh, yeah. to addressing this matter. Yeah, yeah. If you had promised to give them some amount of money, why not do it? Where is the money? They have been asking for it. And so it goes back to the question, the sincerity of government, because they are now saying that the government is not being sincere with them at addressing this matter that is going on in the state for years now. Even recall the governor was also attacked at some point yeah. in, I think, 2021, when he went to the, the farm. He was attacked. His convoy was attacked. And he had to run into the farm. We did not see anybody that was arrested okay, yeah. or questioned with regards to that. No so it goes back to the same question. How sincere is government at addressing this matter of insecurity, not just in Benue State, but across the country? That's where it boils down to political will. We don't have the political will here in our country. Mm -hmm. uh, it's, it's, it's disappointing. It's, it's, it's painful, uh, Vera. Uh, because uh, when I was growing up, I attended a public school. When I was growing up, uh, some people think that Nigeria is a promised land. Africa is a great continent. We are marching forward to take our place 
among great nations of the world. But it's so sad that we are marching backward because the spirit of killing in Nigeria is seriously disturbing. It's a worrisome situation because sometimes, you know, you know, if you are not if you are not affected, you don't know how painful it is. Mm -hmm. Their family are in grief. Their brothers and sisters are in grief. Mm -hmm. Then we have people we voted into power. We've been crying for democracy since so, so, for so many years. 